Hey guys, welcome to the first video in my best of 2017 series. I was going to do just one video, but I discovered quite a few products in 2017 that I really love and I didn't want to have too long of a video. I also didn't want to have too many videos. So I'm hoping this will be a nice balance for you guys. I'm doing today's video, which is best of makeup face products. The next video is going to be best of palettes for 2017, which is including face palettes and eye palettes. And then I'm going to be doing best of eyes and lips, best of skincare and hair care, and best of lifestyle, which is just random things that I loved in 2017. I broke up last year's videos into several videos and you guys seem to like that because the videos weren't too long and not too overwhelming. So I'm hoping this works out this year as well. So I'm already starting out really great because I accidentally deleted the first part of this video. So this is actually a redo of what I've already recorded. I'm not doing every category in any of these videos because I just don't have things that stood out to me in every single category. I tried to really narrow it down to just things that I really and truly loved and some categories just didn't have anything that just blew my socks off in 2017. So I'm just gonna stick with the products that I absolutely loved and we can get started. But first, if you're not subscribed to my channel, please hit that subscribe button and hit the notification bell so that you get notified anytime I upload a video and go ahead and give this video a thumbs up. So the products I'm talking about in these videos are products that I newly discovered in 2017. They may not have come out in 2017, but they were new to me in 2017 that I discovered and used a ton or they just blew me away because I loved them so much. One primer that really surprised me that I ended up loving in 2017 is the Charlotte Tilbury Wonder Glow Primer. I don't even think it's called a primer. Instant Soft Focus Beauty Flash. I had this in my November favorites. I just really love this. It's great by itself. It helps give a radiant, luminous glow to the skin. It kind of evens out the skin tone and it's great under any foundation I put it under, whether it be powder foundation, BB cream, a lightweight foundation, a heavier foundation. I just like it for days when I really don't want to look super matte. I want some kind of a glow underneath whatever I'm wearing. A lot of times radiant or luminous primers, if you have oily combination skin like I do, they can be a gamble because they can make you look greasier as the day goes on. This does a great job of making my skin look really nice and radiant and lovely. It helps my makeup last all day long. It just gives a soft focus to the skin. I was actually surprised at how well my makeup lasted with this primer. I'm really thankful and glad that I got to try this because this is a definite favorite for me in 2017. If you've been following my channel for any length of time, you know that since its inception, I have been doing foundation reviews. I call them foundation road tests, where I trial out a foundation for a certain period of time to see how it wears under different circumstances, applied in different ways, in various conditions, so that I can report back and tell you how it does on my over 40 skin that is combination and oily. I found quite a few that I liked during the year, but I really wanted to narrow it down to just the ones that really made an impact. Maybe I reached for them a little bit more than the others. The first one that I'm gonna mention is the Too Faced Peach Perfect Comfort Matte Foundation. I was actually really surprised at how much I did like this foundation. I know it's been raved about a lot, but there's a good reason for it. If you have combination oily skin and you want a comfortably matte foundation that is going to last a long time, but look good on the skin and not look too heavy or too overly made up, this is a great option. Yes, it does have that peach scent, but it dissipates after I put it on. It does say it has 14 hour wear. I've definitely gotten 14 hours out of it, maybe even more before. It's photo friendly. If you're someone who has tried Estee Lauder Double Wear and maybe you feel like it takes a little bit long to apply or that it looks a little bit heavy, this could be a good option for you. If you haven't seen my video on how to apply Estee Lauder Double Wear without looking cakey, I'm gonna link that below. I'll also put it up in the card right there so that you can see that because there are ways to make it work for you. And I know that's how a lot of you actually found me. This has been one of my top go-to foundations for when I want a natural matte 
long wear foundation. I was actually surprised by this next foundation too, and I was late getting on board with this, so you guys probably were on board with it before I was. It's the It's CC Full Coverage Cream. It does have SPF 50 in it. I always thought it was for more dry or normal skin, but it works really, really well on my combination oily skin. It doesn't settle into fine lines. I have foundation reviews on all of these foundations. I'll try and link those below, or I'll at least link my foundation road test playlist so you can get to different foundation reviews. I like that I can apply this in different ways and get different levels of coverage. I can get from light to almost full coverage with this foundation. It looks really nice on the skin. It looks natural. It feels good. It has SPF 50. It's got beneficial skincare ingredients in it. I do feel like this is a foundation that people either love it or they hate it, and I am in the camp that loves it. I did a video, I've done several videos in 2017 about concealers, about correctors, and one of which was a video where I tested 14 different concealers on my under eye circles, which are dark and they do have texture. If you have texture underneath your eyes, in addition to dark circles, it's a whole different animal than just having one or the other. So that's why I wanted to do that for you guys and for myself so that I could see what concealer worked the best. And you can go into that video, I'll link it below, I'll link it up there, and you can see how well Tarte Shape Tape worked for me, even having texture and dry under eyes. There are some people that think that this is very drying on them. I also have a video on how to apply shape tape if you're not a YouTuber. I know a lot of you also found me from one of those two videos and I thank you for being here from those because they've helped you out and that is the goal of my channel is to help you guys out. If you are having trouble applying shape tape or you feel like it's too cakey or too dry, go watch that video. I feel like it's helped so many people that haven't been able to wear it before. I'm gonna put the shades that I wear for all of these products, by the way, down below. I just realized I wasn't saying my shades and you can see my entire foundation shade match list over on my blog. It's also linked down below. Shape Tape really works well for me when I want a full coverage concealer underneath my eyes. And I think it was a great discovery in 2017. One concealer that I discovered after I did that extensive concealer testing video, I wish I had discovered it before because it definitely would have been in the top for me, is Double Wear Stay In Place concealer. The, there are two double wear concealers. One is in a tube and then there's this one with the doe foot applicator. I love this for daily wear whether I am wearing full coverage or light coverage looks. It's just beautiful. It gives pretty much tart shape tape coverage but it's more hydrating. I feel like this is such an underrated concealer and it has worked beautifully for me. I think I'm Mm, about down to there with it. I'm gonna need more soon. It's one of the most perfect concealers that I have found. The texture is lovely, and this is a daily wear concealer for me that I discovered in 2017. I hated this concealer in my under eye testing video. It's the NARS Soft Matte Complete Concealer. I have the shade Canal. I've been loving this on my face. I have been using this as my daily face concealer, and it works beautifully for any spot or blemish or anything on my face. It blends in beautifully, it lasts all day, and it's a great consistency for the face. So this has also been a great discovery for me over the past year, and I've been using it almost daily. I have to give props to number seven for creating some fabulous, affordable face powders. So I have talked in videos before about their loose powder and their pressed powder. Both of them are fantastic. I really think if you are looking for a drugstore option for Laura Mercier's translucent powder, you should look at this powder. It's beautiful. It's not too matte. It's not too radiant. It's just that perfect powder for setting the face. The pressed powder, again, is a great affordable powder. It doesn't completely whiten out the face. It touches up your makeup beautifully during the day without altering anything. It's really nice. I feel like I have too many powders in this video, but these have really made an impression on me. I'm gonna talk about this one really quickly because I just mentioned it in my December favorites. So if you want more detail, go check out my December favorites but I have to mention the Too Faced Ethereal Light Powder because it's a favorite. It sets under my eyes beautifully, as do both of those number seven powders I just mentioned, but it sets my face, it sets my eyes beautifully. It is radiant, yet not glowy. I love the Peach Perfect Powder, but I really like this powder more for every day because 
Even though I like to stay somewhat matte, I like it to be a wearable matte. A lot of times I'll wear a mattifying foundation, but I don't want to make it over the top with another mattifying powder. So that's where powders like these really come in handy. And this one, I've just been using it so much. I just had to mention it here. I think I've only mentioned the Fenty Beauty Invisimatte blotting powder one time on my channel, and that was during a get ready with me or a tutorial. It is like no other blotting powder I've ever tried, and I can actually set with it underneath my eyes and on my face. It's completely invisible. There is zero color that comes off with this powder, and it does leave your face matte, but without being noticeably matte, if that makes sense. It really is an invisibly matte powder. This goes with me everywhere I go. I love it. I think it's great. Okay, this is the last powder in this video, I promise. Yes, yes, I promise. I could not have this video exist without mentioning the Maybelline Fit Me Loose Setting Powder. I use shade 20 as a finishing powder after I have completely finished my makeup look. I just take a buffing brush. Any kabuki type brush will do. This one is a Bare Minerals Handy Buki, but you can use any kabuki soft buffing brush you want. And I just buff it in and dust it all over my face. This powder in particular helps make your pores look completely blurred and completely invisible, but without altering the color of your makeup. There's something about this that just blurs invisibly into the skin. Even though there is a hint of color, you can't see it on the face. It just is a gorgeous powder. I don't believe that I've talked about the Kevin Aquan sculpting powder on my channel. I have it in medium. It is the perfect shade of contour powder. If you want that shadow look, which is what you should go for when you are creating a contour. I don't contour every single day, but it's the perfect shade for when I do. This has actually completely spoiled me for all the other shades that I was ever using as a contour. It's beautiful, it's expensive, but it's worth it. I've used it daily since I've gotten it. I think I got it about a month and a half ago. I was going to put it in my December favorites and I thought, mm -mm, no, it's a 2017 favorite. It's the perfect contour shade. Everybody needs to have this contour powder. I feel like I've seen pockets of people talk about these Becca sunlit bronzers and not that many. I love the shade Capri Coast. There's another shade that's in a palette I'm gonna talk about in my palettes video. Yes, there is some shimmer in it, but it's not overwhelming. I can use this as a bronzer shade on the perimeter of my face, or I can use it all over my face, and that shimmer doesn't overwhelm your face at all. I feel like it looks kind of orangey in the pan, but it's cut with enough red that it doesn't look orangey on the face. It's just a beautiful sun-kissed, bronzer shade. I've been using the crud out of this. I've already got quite a dip in there. I don't know if you can actually see that or not. And I think I got this like three months ago, maybe. I've been reaching for this almost daily in 2017. And another bronzer, I got this at the end of 2016, but I'm gonna mention this, the Physician's Formula Butter Bronzer. I have the light one. I feel like a lot of people talk about the dark one, but the light one works perfectly for me. And actually, I'm wondering if these shades are pretty close. This one seems a little bit more caramel than the Becca Capri Coast, but I really feel like I could be completely content with just this and the Becca. They are absolutely beautiful, and I'm so glad that I had them in 2017. I reached for them countless times, and I definitely wanted to put them in this video. We're on the home stretch. I have to mention these NARS liquid blushes. Look at all the fingerprints. It's kind of gross. I guess I should have cleaned them off before I started talking about them. I have the shades Orgasm and Torrid. I have swatches of these on my Instagram. I'm going to link you guys below because I really think they're actually pretty good swatches and they could probably do you more good than if I swatched them here because I think my lighting is getting into the afternoon lighting. And it's not that good. I tried liquid and cream blushes a while back, but I never really liked the texture because they just felt sticky on my skin and they felt kind of greasy. I just, I don't know. I never really liked them. And these came out and they just really transformed my whole belief system in liquid blushes. They blend in easily. They don't take any time at all. And then they just disappear disappear into the skin. They become the texture of your skin. They're just beautiful blushes. And on that same note, I have to mention the Glossier Cloud Paints. I have Puff 
and I have Dusk. Dusk is a more natural bronzy type shade, while Puff is, it looks bubblegum pink, but it comes out to be a really nice natural flush shade on the cheek. And again, I've talked about these in favorites videos before, both of these products, but I feel like the cloud paints are more of a cream format, but they just blend into the skin so easily and they become the texture of your skin. They give you a luminous look. And I feel like both of these products have really changed my outlook on, well, not all cream blushes, but these particular ones. I really have been enjoying using them. And my last two products are blushes. Two, these just kind of really rocked my world in 2017. And I discovered one of them because of Brooke, my 12 year old. She used this on me in a My Daughter Does My Makeup video. That was a tag from Lisa Stevens. Shout out to Lisa. This is Sonia Kashuk in Melon. This is such a great blush. I mean, if you want a blush that is going to brighten up your face, this is a coral melon color, and it is beautiful on the skin. I don't have it on today. I'm just backing it up a little so it's not so washed out in front of the light. It is from Target. It is not expensive at all. I love it. This is the Becca Mineral Blush in Wild Honey. I have for years been looking for the perfect blush for wearing with either a smoky eye or with a red lip and a nude eye. And I never could quite find that perfect blush. And this is it. This is just that perfect nude. At first I was trying to tell people that it was brownish, but it wasn't really a bronzer shade. You can see there's a little bit of pink in there to where it just keeps it from just putting bronzer on your cheeks. But it is a bronzy shade and it just blends into the skin so beautifully. It really does make me want more Becca blushes. And I am sorry that I just discovered them in 2017 because the formula of this blush is beautiful. That is it for my best of makeup face products for 2017. And stay tuned. I think the next video I'm going to do is going to be palettes and we'll just go from there. So again, if you're not subscribed to my channel, hit that subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up and hit that notification bell so that you can be notified for future videos. I'm going to put my social media on the screen and down below so that you can follow me on my social media platforms as well. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.